뭐 저는 항상 좀 그렇게 생각하는데 물론 우승 하고 싶은 게 선수의 뭐 목표지만 일단 결승을 가서 그좀 환우성이랄까 좀 결승 무대를 좀 느끼고 싶은 게 커요 좀 우승도 우승이지만 결승은 두팀다 주인공이니까 좀 그런 걸 느끼고 싶어요. 루 is still talking on stage. The support of the League of Legends event here in Seoul, Korea. It's great to see the support all the way up the chain. This is game three of the semi-final series between Samsung White and Samsung Blue. So far, it's all been Samsung White. They're in the driver's seat. They're leading the series and looking like they're going to close it out 3-0. Monte Cristo, big question. Pick some bands. What do we expect? We've seen Galio, Akali, Varus. White's the only ones that pulled off the fun pick successfully. I really want to see Acorn on a tank this game. It is tank really... Tank Teemo. Yeah, Tank Teemo. Yes. That's, that's what <laughs> it's going to be. Uh, Mundo, uh, if you can get his hands on Maokai, that would be great. When we talk about Samsung Blue, they are pretty defined in their roles as players. Um, primary initiation is usually done by Acorn. Uh, we have secondary initiation typically done by Hart on a champion like Nami. Returning to Nami or Thresh, if Thresh isn't banned, would be great for them. And then other than that, you put Dade on a playmaker, Maybe he pulls out the zigs again. You know, we haven't seen his zig so far this tournament. It's really good. That may be the answer to slow down the game enough in order for Blue to reach that late game. And Moni, I do agree with you heavily. I think Mundo is the champion to see specifically because Samsung White are very obviously reacting to the game much better. Again, they played around the Galia well. We even saw Dandy change his item build based on the enemy team comp so that we don't see some players do at Worlds here, whereas Samsung on the other side had a really hard time fighting Akali. So, yeah, a, a standard pick you know how to play with, something beefy, and just go from there. Well, we'll see how that works out. I want to talk about Imp and Def. Double Lift, you talked about them coming into the matchup. How are they performing? Who's impressed you? Who's uh, disappointed you? You know, even though people will say Imp is a lot better, honestly, they perform pretty similar. You could argue that they perform roughly the same, and their play style is really shining through as roughly the same as well. It's really just the difference in support. In game one, Hart gave him absolutely no presence on Zillion. He actually missed a million ultis on that, in that game as well. In this just recent game, he didn't really do anything either. He just died a ton on Janna and kept getting hit by more Binds. So really, you can't discredit Deft. He's been playing well. His KDA is really good for getting absolutely stomped in these last two games. Yeah, of course, we'll have to see how they perform, guys. We are going to send this one over to the caster desk to keep the games rolling. Thank you very much, Quickshot. And just up to a few minutes ago, we saw Blue on stage with their coach. White has yeah. been seated for quite some time, and the change came from the head coach back Back when, when they switched Dade and Pawn, that was to sure up weaknesses. And while it did that for Blue, I think White came out with the astronomically scaling ability to keep going farther once they figured out what to do with that composition. Yeah, and I mean, that's just credit, obviously, to every single member. Absolutely. White. Like, when they had Dade, they maybe had a playmaker too much. There was a, bit, a, lot, of, a lot of shot calls as well, like Dandy, Mata yeah. wanted to make the calls, and Dade wanted to do it. Yeah. Solving him away was smart. And really let every single player on White now shine. Yeah. And Mata has been outperforming hard big time as well. Double just talked about it. I mean, the biggest thing I've seen in this series is just how much faster White has been playing, reacting, and doing pretty much everything. Even faster preparation in between games because Blue took a while yeah. to sit down even. Uh, so Monte Cristo just talked about how he wants Akon to play a Maokai if he can get it like a tanky top laner. Problem is, Maokai's been banned now by Samsung White in every single Boom. game, and they had no reason Easy. to stop banning it. Because again, on yeah. the side of Samsung Blue, they banned Zillion on blue side, they banned Alistar on blue side, two of the purple side bans because they're so strong you should first pick them. Opens up for Samsung White to ban whatever they want. They target Acorn, yeah. once again, his Rumble is gone, and his Maokai, the main it's, tank pick for him. It's really disappointing that Acorn hasn't put enough practice into Alistair to feel comfortable first picking it because that is hurting their pick band phase really heavily here. At least they react might with first the pick Rengar. They might first pick the Rengar here, seeing as they leave it open and it's been such a problem for them. Spirit does play it, just not on the level of Dandy. We actually see the confidence a bit of Dade saying, I want that Jace out. It is way too controlling overall in the game and has been controlling Dade in that mid lane, even when he was up. We saw Pawn, find, Pawn finding his kills around the map and guys, 
Kind of called that one out there. That first pick, Rengar, coming out to Vicio. That will be now in the hands of Spirit, but Dandy can still wreak havoc with whatever he decides to go with. Yeah. They're not forced to pick yeah. that jungler since they already see it. It's the Twitch Janna that they may be locking in. Yep, and at least they can block the poke from Jace here because they have already banned right. it, so it's not as lethal as the early comps from Samsung White. At least they have banned or picked away what has been working for White which is one of the most basic of strategies when you're trying yeah. to do things. And honestly, I do think it's time for Blue to go back to basics. They've tried to pull yeah. out the Varus and Galio and all these strange things and beat White at their own game. But what they really need to focus on when everything's really on the line is what got them here. Late game control. Yes, and that's probably why Samson White decided to not pick Ryze here. Because again, Akon is not a big Ryze player. I'm sure he can play, but if he wants to pull it out or not, we're gonna have to see here. But if Bryce is being picked with Dada in the mid lane, you don't have enough wave clear, safe wave clear like a Zix would have, like maybe a Zerif pick would have, to stall out the game. Rice is gonna have to be pretty much in your face. When people siege on you, you have to gauge with the Ryze here because you have too short range. And that could be one of the reasons for White giving Rice once again to Samson Blue here. And obviously because they want the Twitch and Janna pick, and that's a Sona. Sona's a champion they've been putting a lot of practice in. Uh, of the supports I've talked to, she is actually unanimously pretty strong. Yeah, she's kind of like just under the top tier support picks we've seen, uh -huh. like Nami, Nami, Janna, and Thresh, which we've seen most of the time. And she's extremely good against Janna in, in lane. Like in lane, she's so good against Janna, but it requires you to get the lane, and Twitch is pretty much always a lane swap for Samsung White. Face of Pawn right now. So calm, as always. Hovers to Katarina. Doesn't decide to actually pick it. He wants to know if that is actually the mid lane or if Acorn's going to be taking that to the top lane. So it looks like maybe in the Kassadin as well. Could be Loopers. A lot of flex picks on both sides, or at least one, as it is going to be right. the Kassadin lock in coming through. Yeah, they don't know where it that. is. They can swing that wherever they want, honestly and it will create some confusion as far as Blue having to finish up everything, not knowing really either of their complete lane opponents. But honestly, Blue should keep doing this. They should keep picking some heavy yes, control sir. champions. It would be a little surprising if they throw Acorn up on Rise, but the control that Dade had on Twisted Fate in that Cloud 9 game yeah. was really, really high. Yeah, he is, I mean, it is, Twisted Fate is the most played champion for Dade in competitive play. Like, he's known for it as well. Like, he's so good in Twisted Fate. He can basically snowball every single lane in the game, which is what Samson Blue kind of need to actually stop Samson White, Samson White from being so dominant he's in the early game. Def needs to be breaking out Corky. As Double have said, he's probably the best yep. Corky anyone has seen in League of Legends history. The reason he doesn't want to go Corky right here Heavy, too much magic damage. Yes, there's too much magic damage if it goes for the Corky pick. So it's kind of forced on Lucian yep. now when you had Rise, you had Twisted Fate, even the Sona coming in. Well, we do see Dade picking up that TF. He can now get around the map that's kind of telling us he wants to feed those lanes even more. Pawn grabs the Fizz. We've seen a lot of lackluster Fizz play here. Can Pawn change that around? If anyone's going to make it work, yes. it's the guy who's been able to pick anything and succeed on it. We've seen his Katarina. Yeah. Now we get to see his Fizz a double assassination comp, maybe just a full assassination comp if you count Twitch as an assassin here. For sure. White is going to try and play the same crazy spread out killing style. Explosive mid. But Blue has a bit more control this time. This game right here is going to be decided by Dade on Twisted Fate. Right. Because Twisted Fate against pick comps is so good because he's so good at reacting to the picks being set up here. And first of all, with his ulti, you can see how many members are about to join the fight. And then obviously he can react in time, help out whatever member is being jumped, and quickly turn it around in favor of Samson Blue here. So if, as long as Dada can survive the laning phase against the Fist, which shouldn't be a problem for him, there's kill potential for Fist, but Twisted yeah. Fate can always sit back and farm. Then he should be able to actually somewhat control the game. Just one player. But well, let's see. Easier said than done, yes, for sure. Exactly. The teams are loading into the game three. It's just about to get underway, so head over to Twitter once again and vote for the team you think will win. Send hashtag SSBWin or SSWin to at LOLE Sports. Don't forget the hashtag. We're going to be reading those later. And hopefully a big level six coming out of blue here so they can make an impact where they've been trying to in that mid game. Because if they fall once again, I think this could be a quite, quite quick 3-0. That's the direction it's going, but we've seen 2-0 swap back yes, the other way have. on numerous occasions. And if Blue can get their confidence back 
and wound the egos here of Samsung White. Maybe they have a chance of coming back in this series because when White starts rolling and playing with confidence, they look near unstoppable. Yeah, and the laning phase here, I mean, Rise is, is having a fairly easy lane against Kassadin in a one-on-one, -on -one, so that's going to be an easy, easy lane for Akon to deal with. Bottom lane is heavily in favor of Samsung Blue, which means with the Twitch pick, there's a very high chance we see the lane swap from Samsung White like we've seen actually in every single game so far with the lane swaps. Yeah, and I fear for Dade's laning phase against Pawn's Fizz. I've seen a lot of Fizzes just go off against TF and lane, especially if he gets a little bit of an edge, and especially since Pawn has had such an advantage over Dade this whole series. Yeah, it's all about the outplay potential here. If you go in with your Q on Fizz and you save your Trickster, your E, for when the gold card is being, being shot in the air from the Twisted Fate and you dodge it, then you have the all-in potential. There is Ghost Flash though, like we often see from Dade when he can. And that Ghost can be very important if Pawn wants to try like a max range ulti to try and uh, hit him with it. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of ultis used quite fast in this one. We've seen three-minute dragon fights and even earlier skirmishes in the jungle. Samsung White did not come out good on the end of that second game skirmish. Losing one, but still coming out on top in the game. A very hard force to stop. Minions and right now, fall. putting everything on the plate. It's like they're coming into these with a roll of quarters in their fist for every fight here. And Blue's got to find a way to stop it. Look at that early game positioning. It's like they're actually predicting that White is camping on their Blue and they're trying for a late counter invade, but it's just it's not there. It's completely missed. And they will get spotted here by an outside ward. But they should be able to get the 2v2 lane here. Samsung White can still send Twitch down in the bottom side and just fast push the lane. Now they do see Death and Heart in the top side, and that's actually what they do. So in the current meta, you can pretty much guarantee a lane swap because you don't have to freeze the lane anymore, necessarily. You can fast push it, have your members be on the bottom side of the map in this case, and still deny the enemy top laner all the farm. So that. Therefore, Samson White, because they were around the mid lane, can just send Twitch down bottom side now. It's dangerous for Blue. They haven't been able to pull off this lane swap. They weren't able to match the lane swap. And they're going for a fast push because they want this lane swap to last the shortest possible amount of time. They're going to get three buffed. Yep. Mato was already at the red buff here. Uh, they're running in. Probably. We might see an early fight here. We may Probably just see an early buffed. fight. It depends if Imp decides to faint over there or if Pawn beats TF to the punch. Well, the Ward Wars have definitely already gone down on this one. Red buff in the brush. Wow. The Hurricane. Wow. What a great Janet Tornado. Right Howling there. Gale, Hurricane, Tornado. <laughs> Call it's it whatever you want. The point is, you knock up the Rengar, he cannot get the Smite oh, Steel. Oh. They might have seen Imp go invisible on that one. Definitely the pings going down, but look at this. Three to the bot lane. They have so much vision right now of what's going on the side of blue, and they're going to be sharing a bit more experience than they want to here. Let's see how they work this one out. It's going to be Mata and Imp soaking this one up. Already pushed up to the turret. And because so many members from Samsung Blue already showed on the bottom side, it means Looper can now teleport top lane once the wave actually hits the tower and get solo experience where Akon has to share with Heart down his bottom side. Let's see if he decides to do it. He's going back to base now. Instant teleport top. I really feel like Blue is completely beaten out early on in the game here, and Acorn actually gets hit again. That's going to be some big damage. The exhaust to stay in Whoa. range. Oh my gosh, they actually pull off the kill as well. You can see the crowd is even stunned on that one. What a burst of damage right there. Yeah, there was the exhaust here, and there was no armor runes on Acorn because he obviously was against a castle in lane against double AP, so there was no armor runes either. And they didn't force the swaps properly, honestly. Acorn was trapped down bottom. They had the jungler there in case of some extra aggression. They ended up there with an extra support. They had sustain, but they ended up getting all in. Everything just came cascading down in the wrong direction for Blue here. And they're still not going to be able to manipulate these lanes right. And just the worst possible start when you've just been so down because you've been absolutely destroyed in two games. We saw them after the game here. Everyone was just looking down the ground. And then you go yep. in and you give first blood to Twitch, the champion you banned in the last game. Last play by Dada here. Notice how he's actually holding on to the gold card, waiting for the jump. Then he lands. I mean, I'm just looking at this game before it happens, just team composition-wise. We already talked about it. Acorn would, would have had a lane advantage over Looper. Def would have had a lane advantage over Imp. But what's ended up happening, actually, is Looper is in a better situation because he didn't die like Acorn did. 
Imp is in a better situation than Death because he got a kill in lane. And the mid lane, of course, is in the favor of Samsung White. So just like we've seen in all these other games, everyone on White is winning, even though the composition shouldn't dictate that necessarily happening. Well, we already know you give White a bit of an advantage and they will completely run with it. Heart level two here, can't do much to save Acorn. The damage already knocking Acorn out of lane. His flash is gone, so he has to walk away from these instants. Janna shield from Mata onto a Twitch as well. I mean, you have so much damage on this Rise, so there's no armor oh, no. in his runes. Let's see his spirit, nope. Good find coming in from Dandy there. Nice pressure towards the top lane. Def is going to have to push out of that, and when White Spirit thought he was safe, he was. He is so far ahead of Blue right now in mentality and in play. Blue is being read like a book right here. Everywhere they want to go, White is there first or they're countering. Cassidy, while he was getting his double golems taken, was able to help set up a kill with Dandy. Everything for White is working. You got Dade trying to fuel people on TF. How much harder does it become when each of your lanes is behind as you're going to Destiny to them? Yeah, that obviously is going to make it a lot harder, but Samsung Blue does have a nice setup for Twisted Fate because you have their crowd control from Sona, you have it from the Rise, so you have a lot of ways to lock down a target and then Dade can join in. But if every lane falls too far behind, Samsung White might even be able to like 2v3 them, even if Twisted Fate comes down because every lane is so far ahead. And we just have to highlight the Ward at the blue buff from Samsung White to see Def and Hart going to top side, and therefore knowing we're not going to go top side with Twitch, we're going to send him bottom lane, was so important because he prevented the standard lanes, which would have been so heavily in favor of Samsung Blue. On picking up two ability tones as he goes back. It'll be very nice for him. Spirit clearing out a pink ward. He has one though. That's knowledge already to White that there is going to be a pink ward on their red buff. We'll see if Spirit can start to make some impacts. He's level four right now to Dandy's five, who already has himself a kill, already on that stone to stay healthy in the jungle. He's actually waiting here. He thinks he's gonna see something. They're playing very safe, even with this lead. 700 gold, two kills, seven and a half minutes. And for Blue, they need to be able to switch to defensive mode and really pick their spots. And they still have a few options to pick the right spots. When Spirit hits level six, Dottie can try and combo a gank. That's kind of the Samsung Blue special that got them so far and made Dottie's Twisted Fate a little bit feared as well in so many situations. It's just with the vision control of White, they're trying to block both the river and also the own jungle of Blue. And since Spirit already used a sweeper, got warded again, there's actually no way for Dottie to gank bottom lane with the ward coverage of White right now. No, and you constantly see them ward very far in here around the camps as well, so they can always spot Spirit before he even gets to pop his ult and forcing him to lane gank if he wants to go for any kind of gank huh. because his jungle is deep warded from the start here. There's some good waves there from Samsung Blue, which they can use to kind of sit back and, and chill, but if you fall too far yeah. behind, you are just going to get dove. We see Dade there wild carding the warded brush instead of allowing Looper to just sit there, lose experience. Dade says, yeah, you're alerted, you're sitting on a ward. So he's just giving knowledge right now to White. A little bit on edge here. On, got 70 to 60 in that lane. Not a huge discrepancy, but it is going to be blue over to Pawn now. We may see some action at that Dragon Pit. Yeah, and that's where White has kind of made their mark in these previous games. It's either right before the Dragon Fight or at the Dragon Fight. They've come ahead of Samsung Blue time and time again. Maybe it's a moment where Blue just gives it up or goes aggressive them themselves before any of that happens. Yeah, yeah, they have to set up a pick first and then go for it. They cannot risk starting off the Dragon, take damage from the Dragon, and then the triple assassination from Samsung White comes in, and the chase potential when you have a castle in as well if the fight goes wrong for Samsung Blue. Lose that fight, get a few kills on this and cast it in, and the game is over. So I feel like they have to go for a pick first if they want to start dragging. So we blue. have to consider now White is alert of that window where Dade can use his destiny and get a play for the rest of the team. Right now they're all quite pushed up. So it doesn't look like much can be used from that at this point. Nine and a half minutes in. We're going to see Blue trying to do what they can to continue feeding Def these resources. Spirit's here to try and do that already. Yeah, and Samsung Blue is really going back to what used to work for them. A lot of defensive pink wards as well. Look at the three pink wards they have here. Dada is actually standing on one of them. Simply to make sure you can use the Twisted Fate. Here's Ulti coming in. Doesn't matter if the lane is pushed. 
Gonna be a big hit, and they are gonna take down Imp. They are gonna drop Mata. Looper comes down very late on this one, but safety to get himself out of that one. And Blue tries to make the first move here as they go six, and they go hard. For pretty much the first time this series, Blue makes a move that can't be countered by Samsung White. That's the magic of the Twisted Fate plus Rengar. They appear on top of the turret. White is not safe, and now they push for more. Five-minute Dragon against three of Samsung White. Exactly what we talked about here. Samsung Blue had to sell the paper. They want to steal. Let's see what they can do. He's oh! Gone. The Prince of Thieves comes up once again, kicks away, almost to safety. That's a kill going over to Spirit, but Looper's finalized himself. One, two, possibly three with one more rift. No, he's just going to get the triple kill off an easy Q. It does not look good right now for Acorn. He's going to be falling from the tree. Possible quadra kill. Pawn's going to pick one up for himself. Beautiful job at Dragon. And once again, Blue reaches a little bit too far. The Dragon Seal was just the icing on the cake because when White collapsed on that Dragon Pit, there was no hope for Blue. They burned everything during their initial turret dive and they had nothing left when the fight happened. Well, let's just rewind a little bit. We're just gonna see the fight again. This is three members from Samsung White. Dandy gets the steal. We've seen it so many times back in OGN as well. And then the castle in here can just start cleaning up kills. Daddy goes down first, flash in with the E, and meanwhile, Master rejoins, and now the castle in chase just starts. And it's, it's too much. I mean, they were low on mana, they did not have ultimates, and White was there to collapse. Blue could have been happy getting the kills and getting out of there. Yeah, very that's, true. That's what Blue needed to do in any of the games this series, is make it to 20 minutes without losing the game. But you also have to look at it from Samsung Blue's point of view. Everything has gone wrong for two games in a row. The whole idea was we pink out our own jungle, right. so Twisted Fate mm -hmm. and Ringa can get in for the gank. We get the kills, we take the dragon, we go back to laning phase, and we relax. We get into late game here, we slow down the game. That was the whole idea. The problem was, as we also mentioned, as soon as this dragon fight goes wrong, a lot goes wrong. A lot goes wrong because Kassadin and Fizz, they get the kills. Dada is like, I have to snowball now. And he buys a soul stealer. And every time we see Blue coming to these games, they want a skirmish. They don't bring the exhaust. Mata and Dandy calling the battle orders, doing so well. And Mata brings the exhaust out to shut anybody that it's there going to make an impact. Yeah. The fallout from that dragon fight is still echoing here. I mean, Looper finishes his Rod of Ages at 12 minutes. Wow. Dade probably at that moment just says, he has no way of winning this game unless he gets a bunch of kills by himself. But the problem is, Gold he's not there. set up to help him there, and White can do wow. whatever they want. Blue is completely out of sorts now. Surgically removing Blue from the map at this point. White will grab a turret off of this if they even choose to. Keeping the lanes going is a little bit of what's getting them their kills. We see Blue trying to push down on the bottom lane now as White will answer with a drop on top. Bit of a race. Dade getting hit up. He could just get Howling Gale right out of a destiny. Why he's not trying to get out of this one. He's able to walk out. He has wards on the backside to stay safe there. And he's also giving a little bit of pressure relief here to the bottom lane so they can make an impact. But not much of an impact because they don't have too many forward wards to stay safe for too long on the side of white. See what they can do with the rest of this. We see Spirit actually behind as well. A kill to himself, but he does go for the Moby Boots again. We've been seeing it on Rengar's. Still, still trying to make plays, and making plays indeed. That's the pop-up. Here comes the expunge, locks it down. And the poison, along with all the damage, enough to take Dottie down. He just got back from base. Yeah, but when you lose your mid-tower so early, it simply opens up for the other team to get in, place a few deep wards. We can see it from Samson Whitey on the minimap in the jungle of Samson Blue, and then just start setting up these picks. You're never safe anymore because they can see pretty much the entire map. And if you find a twisted face standing in mid lane alone, you go for the kill. Yeah, and White's just gonna keep going here. They're walking right over wards, and Blue has to give up position because we know how strong Dandy and the rest of White is right now. I just see Blue being in total desperation mode right now and not having the item to fight. But here they go. The destiny goes, so vision is everywhere they need it to. Spirit, so low, heart! Just as low in a matter of seconds, a double kill coming in for Pawn. It doesn't matter what he's on. The team's ready and willing to continue the kills. There we get another one going over to Dandy, and the obliteration begins once again now. We're only 15 minutes in, 
It's a 7,000, well, 6,000 gold lead as they hit 20k. Yeah. You can see Spirit he looks just dejected at this completely point. Completely defeated. They looked a little bit defeated before the game, yeah. and they had that glimmer of hope when they pulled off the Twisted Fate Rengar gank, but they only get pretty much one positive play in this entirety of the semifinal series, and this was just a poor decision from the start. Yeah, they're going, I mean, Ryze is not there, so it's actually a 4v4, but they're already so far behind. Instantly, two members goes down, Tricks are coming in, hitting both of them, and just, once again, watch you drop low. Kassadin and Aleeson is never gonna let you get away, so they can just keep chasing these kills. And this yeah. has to be one of the most one-sided series I have seen. Which is ever. remarkable, because Blue yeah. has so consistently controlled Samsung White in best of five series. Two seasons of champions in a row, they defeat them in the semifinal. And what the, the ultimate revenge for Samsung White to destroy them probably 3-0 yeah. at Worlds. It's It has to feel amazing for them right now, but honestly, pretty devastating for Blue as well. We say these teams aren't sister teams, but it's like Blue is trying to replicate the battle strategies of White. That mid game was not what they played throughout the season, and it seems to really be hurting them as that's been their focus in three straight games. Yeah, they're just getting completely outplayed, and I think for me, we have talked about it before, the pick and ban phase. Now oh, no. oh wow! Well. Nobody said it. The pick and ban phase, the last two times these teams faced each other, has actually been in favor of Samsung Blue. They're normally very fast right. at, at adapting to like new picks. Absolutely. Summer semifinal, it was a Maokai pick for Akon, which was a huge deal. Samsung White had to ban it like in every single game after losing to it. But now we've been on the same patch for such a long time, doing Worlds. And it just seems like Samsung White has the edge in champ select. Samsung Blue no longer has they that do. advantage. White has every edge. They can ban whatever they want. They can play whatever they want. Obviously, I mean, they, they played so many different strategies. Pawn's champion pool is like an ocean at this point. I, <laughs> I haven't seen him bad on any single champion, which is crazy because when he kind of first switched over to White, he was this defensive Oriana kind right. of Ziggs player yeah, yeah. that All the time. Obviously, he had a few standout moments where he'd get the solo kills, but everyone saw him as this defensive player. Now I look at this player, and he is just this remarkably ambitious, versatile, agile player that can do anything the team requires. And that is really the funny thing, because before he joined the Samsung team, he was known as a fist main, like a fist god, actually. When he was playing on like amateur teams, and then he joined Got on the Samsung Blue lineup here, in this case after the swap as well, and it was kind of like, okay, you're gonna play utility-based mid laners. But he's always been an assassin player, and now he's really getting to play during Worlds, and he's just shining on it. Absolutely, back on point. Now giving Spirit a little bit of hell in his own jungle. We can see that Hart really can't even reply to this. Gets him right out. Not even gonna help that Spirit tries to throw on the ulti. Not enough time there, and they have Hart on the run as well. Looper's just drawing in more oh, of no. a fight here. They have a full team of white coming behind them. Hart's just running, trying to get out. He's not going to solidify that kill onto Looper. He's way too tanky with the Rod of Ages already charged up. And that's one thing that Blue is as well, is trying to charge up a lot of items that they're not going to have time to charge up now. You know, we saw the first and the second game, and white was basically getting one kill per minute. The fact that they've been able to keep this up for every single game in this series. Crazy. It is so crazy how good they are in this matchup, how well they've prepared, and the domination that they have shown in this. I mean, for all the build-up, all the 3-2 white, 3-2 blue, this series could go either way. White is just rewriting the book of this matchup between these two teams. And just look at how they changed their picks. Assassin's mid lane, even Looper oh, is playing like Assassin champion with that Kali in game one with the Cassidy in this game here. He normally plays like the utility tank top laners. So Samsung White before This is ugly. I mean, yeah, they're just gonna keep killing the left and right. 2v1 right now. Doing what he wants. Dandy going where he pleases. The cripple hits. He's gonna have the connection. The Howling Gale will pop him up. There's the Zephyr, the exhaust, and Pawn just plops right down for this another is kill. one of the biggest stomps of all of Worlds. Yeah. And that's pretty much counting group stage. The gold lead at the end of game one was the largest gold lead in all of Worlds. If we were to track through the history of League of Legends and best of fives, the accumulated kill death score and the total gold lead of that series, I doubt you'd find one worse than this one. Absolutely and it's in the not. semifinals of Worlds, it is miraculous what White is doing right now. And it's now. crazy how it got almost earlier and earlier each game. Now 19 minutes for the inhibitor. It only took them a few more minutes than the first game to close out number two, but it looks like they're going for some bit of a record here in a best of three series, not wanting to go five games 
We still see Depp trying to push. Spirit getting caught out once again. You're up, you're down. There's almost no time to have on the Rift right now for Blue as they are just getting taken out every time they are on top of a ward or scene. Still damage from Looper, or rather Depp. He's not going to get these kills just to hop away from Looper, and he's still drawing uh, the oh. attention. Oh. Here comes Pawn. Here comes Pawn indeed. There's the damage. He's going to be able to lock this one down. Relentless Pursuit was already used. The catch-up is there. Heart goes down on the other side of the map as well, and things are getting a little out of hand at this point. 23 to 3, 20 minutes in with an 11,000 gold lead. This is one of those games where Blue knows it's the last game before they're eliminated for Worlds, so they don't want to give up, and everyone is trying to make a play, but it is just leading to disaster right now. I feel so bad for Dade. I mean, Worlds last year, it looked yeah. so good going into Worlds. Disappointing performance by everyone by himself. Now, once again, they looked extremely good coming in. They're the number one seed from Korea. He got MVP in the spring yep. when they won the whole thing, got the to the question. final again. Step up. And now, that Worlds, and they're just getting completely destroyed. That guy is not meant to win Worlds. I mean, they're losing to a team that is playing so remarkably well in pretty much every single position. I mean, we talk about the way that Samsung White generally operates. It's Dandy and Mata placing the wards and making the plays with two defensive solo laners, generally speaking. Yes. But they have been unleashed in this semifinal. Pawn and Looper are just doing stuff on their own, and this team is an unstoppable force right now. And that is exactly why Samsung White in the past haven't been able to close the game fast enough against Samsung Blue, because they had the more passive solo laners at that time. But now when you just give them these assassin picks and you get this leader alone, which we have seen them have before against Samsung Blue, they can just completely snowball out of control and give Blue no chance. Snowball out of control indeed. It's rolling down the hill quite fast. Fish goes out. Acorn gets chomped on that one. And it looks like Dade will also fall. Spirits in the eyes of Pawn right now missing the bola. But it looks like it's not going to matter. We see Hart going down the other side of the map. It's going to be another clean ace if they catch up to Spirit. They have all the time in the world to work on these inhibitor turrets. Actually, on the Nexus turrets right this now. This might be it right and now. With game, we saw they might them. Be going to the finals right now. Huge, 28 to three, 22 minutes in. Are they really gonna knock it down right now? The quickest in this best of five series, and they do not hesitate to drop the Nexus. It's only gonna take three. Samsung White finally defeats Samsung Blue. And in such a remarkable fashion, Three incredibly one-sided fast games. They do it in such style. Picking Akali in the top lane, Kassadin in the top lane, Assassins in the mid lane. Really, anything they felt like playing is what it felt like. To finally defeat the team they could not get past in this way is legendary. And we have our first finals team to come in now. Somebody, Starhorn Royal Club or OMG will be playing against Samsung White as they now hug with their brother team, sister team I should say, understanding what that means to them in a 3-0 defeat as well. Who would have thought, man? Yeah, and I just love these pictures right here. Both teams, kind of like, Deft is obviously completely They say the that they are enemies in game but brothers outside of it. And you can really see this here. White, the team that deals Blue a crippling victory, and also the team that tries to console them afterwards, right? You can see the relationship that these guys have together. But in game, you know the gloves are off. Very much so, sure. business is business. Mentality coming in for them. No way. Pawn oh. gets the general's jacket. Wow. And Dade, wow. even with a smile on his face. That is a big moment. That is a jacket Dade never takes off. No, never. he does not. That's him paying respect here for what just happened. Amazing amounts of respect. Dade wore that when we were in Taiwan, in Singapore, where it was extremely hot, never took it off. That was his mentality because he knows how much power just that jacket itself held in the vision of the community and the vision of what everybody saw. And really, White had it on their plate. We have to take down the general to take down the rest of the army, and now it's what they did every game. Yeah, everything just clicked for Samson White. This tournament right here. The fact they change up the picks, more aggressive, they yep. get the assassins now going, so the early lead they always seem to build up, they can now use to just completely roll over the enemy teams. And it's just working for them. They've improved so much. Everyone is talking about it when we talk with the teams about Samsung White and they say we've been scrimming them. 
and we've been losing to them every single game pretty much. I mean, this is such a dominant team. I can't wait to see what they can do in the final. And we kind of look at the composition, right? They, this, Sam, or Samsung White lost to TSM with a low wave clear composition. That's pretty much a low wave clear composition, but they did not let that happen this time. They showed how strong that could actually be. Yeah, and so much emotion you can see from both sides. It's amazing to see White, how happy they are coming into here, but it's also somewhat devastating to see Blue lose in this fashion after being such a monster Absolutely. for so long. And yeah, as you say, they're there's still no good way of scouting White, which is the scariest thing, because we kept talking about how great White was in group stage and how they were in the quarterfinals, and we're saying, well, that's only because they haven't been tested. That's why yeah. they pick all these different things. Were they tested here? Are I, you not entertained? Uh, that's like the <laughs> question. <laughs> Pretty that much. is the question. Because every single time they win, we say, ah, yeah, you know, they didn't really get tested. I didn't. 25 minutes stop. They didn't leave yeah. me any time to be entertained. 32 However, I game. was extremely entertained throughout it. Yeah, yeah. The, the quickest? I'm was shocked. it the quickest of worlds that we've had? I mean, if you're combining three games together, the, the first game was 28, the yeah. second game was 32. 32, this game was 22 minutes. The total kill score, I know that in games one and three, Blue only managed three kills per game. And I honestly feel like White was rivaling a kill a minute on the opponent. Like, just an uncharacteristically one-sided set of games, especially considering what a great rivalry this has been. Well, there's one thing for sure. Starhorn and OMG play tomorrow, but they have to also be thinking about if they win that game, what the hell are they going to do against White with what they've yeah. just shown? Yeah. I mean, at least they are, no, they are better in the early game than Samsung Blue is, so in that way they might be able to match some of the aggression. But make one mistake. And Samson, Samson White is gone. And that's, like, that's the, it. That's the thing we kind of said about White, right? Is that Dade would punish Pawn's mistakes. That's why he would lose the mid lane. He was the one that could figure out what those mistakes were. And they shored those up throughout every game. This time, Blue couldn't even really get out of their base without being found, without being killed. And that's only going to lead to a very fast win, as we just saw. So, what happens right. now for I White? Mean, do, they, do they even... How do they practice again? They have everything exactly. they need to go to, to go to finals with. And White's weaknesses, if they exist, are still kind of the same. If they get to late game, can they control a right. team that challenges them? But we don't know that until they get challenged. At this point, it's still Dandy and Mata, but it's an everyone show because everyone shined here. Absolutely crazy stuff. A 3-0 as Samsung White becomes your first team to head to the finals to either face Starhorn Royal Club or OMG. Right now, we're going to send it over to Shox, who is on stage for a word with one of our winners. Thank you very much, guys. And I have the pleasure to be joined here by Dandy after that victory. First up, congratulations. And immediately the question, how satisfying is it to be able to beat Samsung Blue that has given you so much trouble in the past and to do it 3-0? 그동안 그렇게 이기 힘들었던 삼성 블루를 드디어 이기 됐어요. 소감 좀 말씀해 주세요. 어, 그러니까 한편으로는 정말 제 프로 게이머 인생에서 정말 어, 제, 제일 넘기 힘든 벽을 넘었다는 것에 대해서 제 자신이 자랑스럽고 저희 팀이 자랑스럽습니다. I think Samsung Blue was the biggest mountain, like the biggest mountain obstacle during my professional gamer life, and I'm really glad we were able to overcome that mountain, and I'm really proud of my teammates. Um, tell me a little more about how you were able to bring them down, and especially about those aggressive picks you decided to go for. It seemed like you guys knew something that we didn't. 그 경기 내내 이제 모든 픽들이 다 되게 공격적이고 이제 되게 그 네, 공격적이었는데요. 그 삼성블루 어떻게 이기게 되었는지 좀 설명 좀 해주세요. 어 저희가 원래는 이제 스크림에서는 되게 공격적으로 하는데 대회에서는 좀 수비적으로 움츠러들어서 하는 플레이가 많았거든요. 근데 이제 저희 코치 형이 그걸 지적해 주면서 대회에서도 그냥 너희 하고 싶은 대로 해봐라. 이래서 이제 저희 스크림에서랑 비슷하게 공격적으로 하니까 저희가 아마 쉽게 이겼던 게 아닌가 싶어요. So usually when we practice, we play these kind of aggressive picks. But at the tournaments, we played a lot of passive plays and picks. So our coach told us to like just play as you practice. And like we did in scrim, we just pick the aggressive picks as usual. And I think that's why we won easily. Even though you guys did win this game, and you guys are big rivals, we saw here at the end on stage, you guys were giving each other big hugs. Tell us about the friendship between those teams, despite 
how you beat them here. 경기 끝난 후에 삼성 블루팀과 이제 따뜻하게 포옹을 나눈 장면이 나왔었는데 경쟁자임에도 불구하고 이렇게 그 형제 팀으로서 친구에 대해서 좀 얘기 좀 나눠주세요. 어 저희가 이제 형제 팀이 모두가 다 서로 친하거든요. 근데 이제 롤드컵 결승이 아니라 4강이란 무대에서 한 팀은 이제 떨어져야 된다는 게 한, 너무 그냥 좀 미안했던 것 같아요. 네. As as a sister team, like we're really close with Samsung Blue, and I think it's just really sad that one team has to lose at this stage at the World Championship. Well, you guys did make it, going on to the final. Do you have any preference of who you want to play there, OMG or, or Starhorn Royal Club? The 결승전 대진으로서 그럼 OMG 팀과 로열 클럽 팀 중에서 붙고 싶은 팀은 있으신가요? 저는 이제 인색이랑 제로 님이 계시는 로얄보다는 OMG 팀과 붙고 싶은데 한 번도 만나본 적이 없으니까 그냥 OMG랑 붙어보고 싶어요. Uh, rather than playing Royal Club who has Insect and Zero, I want to play against OMG. Um, we never met, never played against them in the past, so I, yeah, I'll pick OMG. Um, what would it mean to you to be able to win that world final after the incredible road you've been through, getting knocked out early last year and dominating here this year? 작년 이제 롤드컵 실패 이후로 이제 지금 이 순간까지 되게 많은 일들이 있었는데 이번 결승전 때 우승을 한다면 댄디 선수한테는 어떤 의미가 있을까요? 음, 저희는 로, 저번 롤드컵에서 안 좋은 모습을 보여줬던 멤버가 네 명이 그대로 이번 연도에도 왔잖아요. 그래서 아마 롤드컵을 이긴다면 뭔가 저희의 부족한 점을 채우고 그거를 보완했기 때문에 아마 아, 엄청 보람 있는 그런 대회가 될것 같아요. When we had a failure at last year at Worlds, the four players, except for Dade, we're still in the same team. And if we win this tournament, I think it would mean that we fixed all our, our um, faults and our mistakes, and we overcame those kind of um, our bad habits. So I think it would mean a, a lot to us. Oh, finally, is there anything you want to say to all these people here that have been watching your games and all the people watching at home, Andy? 마지막으로 지금 현장에 와주신 팬들이나 이제 TV로 봐주신 팬들한테 한마디 해주세요. 어 저희를 응원해주시는 팬분들께 너무 항상 감사하다고 말씀드리고 이제 결승에서 저희 홈그라운드가 한국이기 때문에 저희가 우승할 수 있도록 꼭 노력하겠습니다. I want to say thanks to all the fans who are cheering for us and at the finals. Since we're at Korea and it's our home ground, we'll try our best to win the World Championship. Well, congratulations once again. We'll see you in the finals, Danny. And as for us, we're going to go over to the guys at the desk. Thank you very much, Sharks. We have our first contender for the 2014 World Championship. It is Samsung White. Holy crap, did they deliver in that wow. series? Wow. We've got a replay lined up that I think really summarizes the entirety of this series from very early on in game three. Let's get this up onto your screen very quickly. Uh, we don't want to go too micro, too granular, but let's roll the clip out and maybe Crepo, talk us through the initial double kill for Blue. Yeah, I mean, this is the first spark of hope we've seen for Blue in the series. It's like this play is all, like, it's uncounterable. You would even argue that White should not even get Looper involved, but. I think what comes next shows exactly why like, Luba was needed there. Yeah, and if we come around here now, this is uh, Samsung Blue now moving towards the Dragon, but this is the mistake um, because they do fight this Dragon quite poorly, and I'll talk about it in a second, so... Yeah, Sona's just only level 5 right now. It's so so risky to do a Dragon fight, and if you look at the series, this is not the first time. Right, and of course, there's a reason why we call Dandy the Prince of Thieves, and that's it right there. Comes in for a pretty easy steal, even through the gold card stun. And look at that flash from Acorn. He isolates his team. He's actually the tankiest guy on this roster. He'd love if Fizz fought him, but he gets zero damage as the team gets mopped up. Yeah, Acorn was really the problem there. I think if he had stuck in the fight, that they would have been able to actually at least survive alive. And this is the point when I just knew Spirit is completely out of the game. I'm not going to expect him to play well for whatever rest of the series there is, because he got Dragon stolen from him by Jace previous, and then now it's just too crushed. Yeah, and I just kind of the, I think the takeaway here, which is very interesting to me, is we've seen similar compositions. Samsung White lost to TSM with a similar comp. Uh, Samsung or Alliance lost to Kaboom with a similar comp. Very low wave clear. The only way they win this game is by winning a skirmish that is forced to Dragon, because they don't have great engage, they don't have wave clear, and so they found probably Blue found like the, one of the few ways they could have lost. If they had gotten that dragon, it would have changed a lot. Yeah, and speaking of skirmishing, I actually want to point out Looper. I thought, beginning of the series, oh, it's Dandy versus Spirit. 
I think the make or break matchup here was definitely Looper versus Acorn. Acorn got absolutely destroyed. Looper brought out a bunch of new champions. Looper had a 52 KDA in this series. 19 oh, 1 and 33. He was ridiculous. And oh, wow. he's going to be fun to watch the finals. <laughs> so let's let's take a step back and, and talk about the team holistically and the performance. I, I want to highlight uh, the, the mid lane matchup of Pawn and Dade. Right at the end of the game, there, you know, Pawn completely shone this series. He destroyed Dade uh, multiple times. And. and Porn really impressed. The thing that I, that stands out for me is Daddy, of course, was replaced in Samsung Blue. At the end of the series, an incredible show of sportsmanship. He actually hands his jacket to Porn. This is something that I personally found very meaningful because Daddy, he wears that jacket all the time. There's a bit of a history that he never gets rid of it. Yeah, in interviews, he said uh, in Champions in post-match interviews that I mean, he said some weird stuff like that. It's like imbued with the power of his sweat and, and things like that. But he has a very strong emotional attachment to this jacket. He, he constantly references it. For the player to give the jacket to the his teammate who took his position, you know, I, I just I respect that a lot. But Samsung White completely outclass every single one of their opponents this series. Yeah, for me, the MVP, uh, I guess everyone has their own MVP. But for me, it's Pawn. I think he's the mini faker of this world, honestly. I always rank players by versatility in, in champion pool, consistency, and mechanics. This guy's got all three. He's got it locked down. He's better than pretty much every mid laner in the world right now. Honestly, what impressed me the most is that, like, League of Legends is a team game, right? So to, to come close to perfection, you need to work well as a team, aside from all those mechanics and individual play. And Samsung White is the closest thing I think we've seen League play to perfection, barring maybe SKTT1 last year in some of the games, but they're just playing so beautifully, so on point, and yeah, they, they're forcing the enemies constantly to make these uncharacteristic mistakes. I mean, Blue is, is generally really a good strategic team, but their strategy just fell through the entire series, and that's just because White is putting on so much pressure. Yeah, I have to absolutely agree. I mean, there's the interesting champion select, again, the Singe top, the Akali top, that was great, but also just the fact that we even saw, like, in the first game replay, Mata already roaming down the pre-orchestrated ganks. These guys are playing the game at the very least 20 seconds ahead, but they're probably planning the moves even farther, but you can see it consistently in their gameplay. Everyone's on the same page, they all got the same goal, and they execute cleanly when that happens. So I've got a question for Monty, just for a while on. Do these guys have a weakness? It feels like, I hate this reference, I'm right. going to use it, I hate right. this weakness. But it feels <laughs> like every single member of their roles is the faker of their role. I hate saying that, but... No, I mean, of course, the good teamwork is covering up a lot of the flaws. But I think what's so interesting is, you know, Freak and I had talked about in the previous show a little bit, was the pick and ban phase going to be their weakness? Was this like kind of intentional sandbagging or a little bit of cockiness? Or was this actually just them making bad pick and ban? And I think the difference critically between the game three that we saw against TSM and the game three that we saw here is that we saw Pawn, their priority in terms of picks change to later. We didn't see him picking up that early mid laner, blind picking his mid. Instead, he picks Fizz as a counter matchup to Twisted Fate. And that really made a lot of difference in how the lanes went and allowed them to snowball instead of just getting all the lanes shot. In. Yeah, what was so sexy about that as well was they early picked Cassidy after Rise, saying, well, it'll just go in whatever lane Rise goes in, pick your other champion. And they got guaranteed two counter picks. So good. So let's just move this on a little bit, pull up the bracket and see exactly how this is shaping up. Now that we do have one of the teams locked into the World Finals uh, next weekend, they'll be going up against one of the Chinese squads. Samsung White 3-0 against Samsung Blue. Tomorrow we will be seeing where the Starhorn Royal Club or OMG will advance to the World Finals. I have a question for both Doublelift and Crepo. What do the Chinese squads do after seeing that? Well, first of all, they'll, have, they'll need replay analysis. And after like some intensive stat tracking, I found that the only loss Samsung White has suffered has been against TSM. So I would really <laughs> look at that game carefully. I can't do this analyze. anymore. I can't take this analyst test seriously anymore. <laughs> they, they just need a lot I'm of done luck here. Because I think they're Apple just I think, I think let's, both of them are outclassed. Let's get a legit answer. What does OMG or Royal Club have to do to win tomorrow? For me, it's like delaying your execution. If they win tomorrow, it's like, all right, we're going to survive for another week, boys. But it's wow. like, you're just dead. <laughs> I don't know. It's so hard. I think the best, like the only avenue they have is if Uzi just hard carries against Imp, who for me is the weakest link, but you can't even really call him a weak link because he's still really, really good. Yeah, that's, I think that's the only area where they can actually be exploited if they punish them falling in the laning phase, but even then I just, I just don't see it. Yeah, I think it's partially Samsung Blue underplayed a little bit, Acorn played worse than he's supposed to, Spirit was outmatched, but you have guys who, who showed up real well, right? You have guys like Loveling who had a great series, you've got guys like Uzi, and you've got guys like Go Going. And if enough of these matchups go equal, and we even saw like 
the gank heavy comp by Samsung Blue of everyone show up bottom lane and kill somebody. Like, you go all in on something, you get someone ahead, and you rely on that person. It is a long shot, but I think the chance is definitely just there. Just them. Monty just Christo, tilt them. Just them. Let's, let's see, how does OMG or Royal Club tilt Samsung White in the finals? You, you, you rotate <laughs> well, them, okay. and then they there become we tilted. Go. There we go. I mean, I think that's <laughs> it our answer. It is superior rotations. I, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got to rotate the tilt. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I don't. I don't know. Nobody's had an answer to this team, and we talked. We talked about coming in. The picks and bans were going to be really open for White, and there's. They just got the doors just keep opening wider on what they can do in terms of their team compositions, in terms of their pick and ban priority. And now Dandy is finally. It took him until the semis. I mean, you see how scary that Rengar is. He hasn't even felt a need to use it up until this point. And where does it go from here? I, I, I honestly say that if Starhorn or OMG. Like, whichever one makes the finals, you have to believe that if they can win this world championship, it would be one of the biggest upsets in League of Legends history. Well, I think on that one, we're just going to have to roll this one forward, guys, because tomorrow we will get our second best of five semifinal between Chinese team Starhorn Royal Club and OMG. The winner of that match will take on Samsung White in the Sangam World Cup Stadium for the Summoner's Cup and the title of World Champions. We'll start the finals at 3 p.m. local time with a 30-minute pregame show. Then it's a special opening ceremony with the traditional Korean elements, the introduction of the teams, and a live performance of Warriors by the one and only Imagine Dragons. After that, the action begins as the finalists battle it out for the right to join Fnatic, Taipei Assassins, and SK Telecom T1K as world champions. After the Summoner's Cup is hoisted, stick around because we will celebrate the champions with fireworks, music, and extended post-game wrap-up show. So guys, mark your calendars for Sunday, October 19th at 8 a.m. Central European Summertime, or if you're in the Pacific time zone, that will hit your streams at 11 p.m. on Saturday, October 18th. Guys, visit us at lolasports.com for the full schedule, world final information, and make sure that you've got the right time zone in your area. That does it for us today here at the Olympic Gymnastics Arena in Seoul. I'd like to give a special thanks to our ever insightful analysts and for myself, Casters, Monty, he's supporting Samsung all the way, the entire world's broadcast crew. Guys, thank you for watching. It's been a good one. Is so much history between these two teams. I couldn't be more hyped up for this matchup. We have quite a game on our hands here today. He also has the intervention on Pond, almost goes down here, but he gets the brush control. Denies the vision. Oh no, Looper gets going. Chain of corruption did go out, but as soon as Looper is let out of that prison, he is just knocking down the wall. It has been an absolutely exquisite performance here by Samsung White. Now into the base, Dade goes down, Fox is going to pick up doubles there, what? tries to throw a corner, oh, oh he cuts him down wow. off the air, and Sam Sokwai takes it to game three, 2-0. Double kill coming in for Pawn, it doesn't matter what he's on, the team's ready and willing to continue the kill.